It's not okay to have those unrealistic expectations. You are setting yourself up for failure for a really, really long time. So I do say have a list of some essentials. I actually am fine with that, but I don't think essentials are things that we sometimes make essentials. Okay, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, because we're going to say some stuff tonight that I think comes right from and is right in alignment with this verse of Scripture. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to prove, be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This verse right here is an important one. Starts off saying, therefore, now you got to go back to chapter 11 to know what he was talking about. And he was talking about the majesty and the awesomeness and the magnitude, the purity of God. And he says, in view of that, in view of God, everything being from him, for him, through him, and to him, I, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Your bodies, your actual physical, your whole self to God. This is your reasonable act of worship. Then he says something interesting. He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but you've got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can we just say that there is a pattern to this world? There is a way things are done. There's a way things happen. There's a way relationships form. There's a way relationships progress. And there is a pattern to this world. And then we are encouraged here from Scripture, don't just follow the pattern of the world. If you do, you'll end up not following the pattern of God. Meaning, uh, we just had a cookie um, competition the other day here at the staff, and I want you to know I came in third, okay? I came in third place for this cookie competition. I don't know how many cookies were uh, submitted. I think there were maybe 10 cookies-ish, somewhere around there, 10 cookies submitted. Uh, one of them was by our Eric, the campus pastor here. They had no sugar in them, so they tasted like dirt. But he still, he still submitted them. So really, there were nine cookies that were submitted <laughs> because it's not a cookie if it doesn't have sugar in it. Um, so in this cookie competition, everyone had a pattern. Yeah. You had a recipe. Yeah, it's good. You got to put certain things in the cookies in order for the cookie to become a cookie. Yeah. Now, I want to say for all of us, we're trying to get these relationships that honor God, trying to live lives that honor God, but we keep doing things according to a pattern that does not have the recipe that God has designed for us. We are inserting into our cookie recipe hot sauce. You don't put hot sauce in cookies. Or your bag. <laughs> or your what? Bag from a song. Okay. <laughs> okay. Onika's drunk. Uh, okay. <laughs> she has had so much NyQuil, I don't know what she is going to say this evening. <laughs> Do you need some water or just something for A little my water? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'm good. Okay, just make sure it's really water, please. Uh, there is a pattern. Thank there you. is a recipe, if you will. Now, I don't dare want to say being a follower of Jesus is can be dumbed down and put in just some kind of little box that if you just check these little boxes, everything is going to go right in your life. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying God has a plan. He has a purpose, he has a design, he has a will for your life. And you and I are wanting the dream of heaven, but we keep inserting all the ingredients of hell into our cookies. And if we keep inserting all these ingredients from hell, 
we're not going to end up with the cookies that God is, that you're wanting or God is wanting uh, for us. So that's just real quick. I want to make sure we talk about the pattern of this world. Now, if you're new to faith today, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know. I thought I was coming to the club, you know, and here I am. This guy's opening up the Bible. I don't care about the Bible. Uh, I would just say, hold on. Okay, hold on. Stick with me. The greatest leader that has ever walked the face of the earth and is the, the greatest leader that has impacted all of, human, all of humanity is Jesus Christ. There is no one that has impacted the world more than Jesus. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I know people spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to go to conferences to hear from speakers and leaders that are leaders in their realm of influence. And I think that's totally fine. But every single conference you go to or every Instagram uh, lesson that you download or every YouTube tutorial that you go through, go ahead and do those things. But at the end of the day, there is not a leader that is better or stronger or more powerful than Jesus Christ. And so I'd submit to you, if you're wanting to live the most vibrant life, yeah. it's not just found in all of the tutorials. It's found in the word of God Beautiful. and following in the path of Jesus Christ. So that's what I'm offering you here today. I'm offering you the path of life. There is a path that leads to destruction. It's wide. There's another path. It leads to life. It's narrow. But I'm telling you, this is the right path for you. This is the path that will bring you to the place you actually want to be, which is living your life for the glory of God. Did I miss anything, honey, before no, we jump into so these powerful. 10 rules? and I think it's a great way to set the table of the night. Mm -hmm. Really okay. great way. So that's setting the table. All right, so so let's go through some fun things here because, we, and I've got, we've got some more scripture we're going to go through, but we thought, okay, what are, we want, how many of y'all want to be married? How many people want to be married? Okay, so yeah. most of us Good in amount. here, most of us in here, how many of you are like, this is a good balcony, by the way. Yeah. Usually balconies are shy, but this balcony is Let's like... Let's go, balcony! Like yes. Let's go. It's a good we, balcony. We see y'all. We see y'all. And just so you guys know, you beat the amount of married couples that came, too. So you guys crushed the married couples. Well done. With that being said, uh, we want relationships to be healthy to be godly, to be Christ-centered. And we thought, hey, let's help with a pattern. Let's help with a cookie recipe so that we can become who God is calling us to be. So, Yeah, ahead, and honey. I just was going to say, these are all tools that you can apply to your life starting today. Because at the end of the day, when we find our identity in Christ, no matter who we date, we are not broken, busted up on the side of the road if for some reason it doesn't end up working out. But when your identity is in that person or in that relationship, it puts a heavy weight on the relationship from the start. But if you have your focus, that my focus, my identity, my value, my worth, my strength, my calling is found in Christ, then you step into a relationship with confidence and grace, and you're not putting your life's hope on that relationship. Relationships aren't meant to take on every care, every worry, every dream. It's what, it can drown them, but Christ can take all of that. And so when we learn that his yoke is easy, his burden is light, it gives us strength for any relationship we enter in. So, so good. So you don't kill the relationship too early. Yeah. You okay. know who you are in Christ. Here's the first one. Date in a way that would make it easy to be friends if it ended. Date in a way yeah. that would make it easy to be friends if it ended. So if you are sleeping together, does it make it, to be fr does it, make it easy to be friends? Yes or no? Sorry. No. How are you gonna go, you know, you're gonna be serving in kids together? You're gonna go, you know, you're gonna, gonna, gonna be in bigs, you know, just leading the kids in worship. And you guys just the night before were just like <laughs> and now it's like, well, I don't think we're right for each other. Hey little five-year-old, Jesus. Don't get too quiet on me, okay guys? I, I want, I want, let's talk, just talk fun. Let's talk real. Let's talk like real, real life. I know we live in a day and age that's like, hey, just 
date, just go all. Try it before you buy it. Yeah, try it before you buy it. Um, all, all of that. We're saying here, whatever that means, date in a way that if you guys broke up, you could still be invited to the same party. That it doesn't make it awkward for all the rest of us now that we now have to decide who's coming to the party and who's not coming to the party because you're making it difficult on us. So now we got to kick you out of the text thread when we don't want to kick you out of the text thread. We just want to keep the text thread the way it is. So we need, if you're going to date, let's make sure you don't make it awkward for all of us. Okay. Good. Number two, make it your mission to outserve one another. Make it your mission to outserve one another. Here's rule number two. If you're dating here at Shoreline City, uh, when my wife and I uh, first started dating, and again, this was a minute ago, so we are, we are old heads, I guess, in here as it comes to, become, comes to marriage. But I remember... Uh, when I really, uh, Onika was fine from the day I saw her, for sure. I was like, dang, look at that girl. And she still, I still think that. Um, but we went on a missions trip to uh, Juarez. And it was absolutely amazing. We uh, were serving at, a, at an orphanage there. And uh, we were dating going there. Yeah. But when we got down there, and I got to see my wife, to be, but my girlfriend at the time. Serving, caring for, pouring life into all these kids that could not necessarily give something back to her. It was powerful for me to watch her serve. It did something in our relationship. So I would say, again, we're saying, don't just make it all about you. In the relationship, try to encourage, lift, inspire, help others and help the one you're dating, and we think this will actually elevate the relationship rather than the two of you pulling each other down. And it gives the relationship purpose. So it's not just about the two of you, it's about a mission. When we were dating, we had a mission statement. We found it in John 15, and we decided that John 15 was a scripture that we were basing our like relationship verses on. Verses 1 through 15 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and we just prayed, God, pull out every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And we just went through line by line as a couple. We wanted our relationship to be healthy spiritually, physically, financially. And we had other couples in our life while we were dating that could ask us the tough questions to make sure we were living in our relationship, like doing it the right way. Because just because you have the goal to do it the right way and just because you love God doesn't mean it's going to be easy to do anything the right way. That's the truth. You can't uh, do it by yourself. Uh, Onique and I, we were getting real. Uh, she, she was really like kind of really all up on me. And uh, <laughs> like Usher, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next thing I knew, she was all up on me saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, were, we were in a season of that. And I was like, girl, I'm trying to live for Jesus. And she's like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we, uh, we're going to be getting married. Honey, it's the truth. It's uh, so we are really trying to honor God here, right, in this relationship. And we're trying not to have sex before marriage. And everything is really difficult. Uh, so we're just, you know, getting really too close to this line over and over and over again. Uh, but we also got this marriage that's uh, on the horizon. We got to pay for this wedding. We don't have the money to pay for the wedding. And maybe that's why we were getting so hot and heavy because we were so stressed because of finances. Anyway, this lady gives us a call and she's like, hey, I want you guys to come over to my house. I, I want to share something with you. She was rich. We know this lady was rich. And... Uh, we I said, maybe God spoke to her heart, and she's going to help give, pay for us to have the wedding of our dreams. Yep, yep. And we were like, oh, my goodness, Lord, you know, we're open, whatever you want to do. But, <laughs> but we really think you're about to provide for us. Thank you, Father, in advance for the miracle that you're going to do. So <laughs> we show up there. She makes us dinner. We're college students. We're so happy. We're just waiting for the... And uh, she uh, actually sits on the floor in front of us. We were on the couch. Yeah. We sit, she sits on the floor in front of us. And she's like, I've been praying for you guys. And um, I'm feeling a, a heavy burden for the two of you uh, that you're getting way too physical in your relationship. 
and that uh, if, you begin, if you cross these lines, it's going to negatively impact the future that God has for you. So I felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to warn you to continue to honor God, to keep him first. And as you do, he'll take care of everything that pertains to your life in the future. Now, It was God because yeah. she said, there's a call of God on your life. And God wants to use your relationship to give other couples hope that they can do it the right way and honor God. And so she said, it's not just about the two of you. It's about God using your relationship for his glory so you can be an example to other people. It was a holy moment. It was a holy moment. It also was scary, too, to be like, Lord, you're talking to people about what's going on. (laughs) Here we are hiding behind some bus in a parking lot, you know, trying to, you know. And the Lord's like, I see y'all. <laughs> yep. And it, it was the grace of God. It was. Didn't feel judged. No. Didn't feel uh, shame. We felt loved. We felt loved. Yeah. Felt like God was saying, I see you. Yeah. I just want you to know God sees all of us as well. And we're going to have a time later tonight, too, to even get a fresh start. So there's no guilt or shame, Frisco, online, or anybody in the room. But we do want to make sure we're clear about the standards that God is setting for us. Because, again, we're trying to live a life that brings him glory and honor. That was number two. Number three, you become intimate with who you pray to, who you pray with, and who you pray for. So pray together and for each other. Now, I heard some crazy, weird lie about like soul ties when I was growing up. Don't ever look that up. But I, I, I heard this stuff. It was like, you better not pray with her because your souls get tied. And it was like, oh, okay, so we're not going to pray. I don't want my soul tied. I don't even know what, what, what does this mean? My soul tied. Uh, but I had some other leaders come in my life and go, and actually Onika was one of the ones to say, all right, so couples, they can kiss They're making out. They're spending all this time together. They're doing all these other things. But the thing that will help keep them grounded in their walk with God is a thing that we're telling them not to do. That does not make any sense at all. So we have now encouraged couples, pray together from the jump. Pray for the person. And let's see God work a miracle in that person's life. So don't be afraid to pray together and for each other. Let me keep on going here, honey, unless you want to jump in here. Watch this number four. This is an important one. Accountability isn't about control. It's about covering. Let someone you trust and want to be like speak into every aspect of your relationship. I am shocked how people come to us and tell us the advice that they are following that they received from people who do not have the type of relationship that person even wants to have. And I promise you, I am not perfect. I'm not, our marriage is not perfect. Our relationship is not perfect. But it's healthy. And God's at the center of it. And you want to find some other, we got couples, there's even a bunch of married couples serving tonight. Let's give it up for all the couples serving tonight. Thank you so much, married couples, for serving. We appreciate you. Find someone you want their, your relationship to be like theirs. Ask them for accountability. It's not about control. It's about covering. Somebody to help you. Uh, who thinks LeBron James is the best basketball player to ever play? Anybody in here? Uh, okay, okay. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Thank you. This is the church that I'm leading. Uh, so... Michael Jordan, LeBron James, you name the tennis player, the golf player, you name the swimmer, the best of the best, all of them have a coach. There is not one person who is an athlete that we respect that does not have a coach. They have someone that looks at their form and goes, whoa, you're, you're really talented, you're really good, tweak this. Tweak this, and if you tweak it, it's gonna make you even better. So we're great with professional coaches. We're great with athletic coaches. But relationship coaches, we're going to go, oh, no, this is mine. It's going to be between me and God. We'll figure it out all by ourselves. How's that working out for you? Get accountability or a coach that can be a covering for you, that can help you navigate your relationship foolishly. I almost left this relationship with Onika two times. 
two times. I almost left it uh, when we were dating. Um, she was amazing. She was wonderful. But I was wanting God to tell me if she was my wife or not. And I was waiting for it. And I'm not, this is just the truth. It's stupid. Don't do this. I was waiting for an angel. Okay? I was literally waiting for an angel to come down. I was too saved. And... <laughs> I was just, I was oversaved, was like, okay? I haven't seen an angel. So I had been, <laughs> I had been in the Holy Ghost furnace for too long, and here I am waiting for the angel Gabriel to show up. Uh, little did I know, I was dating an angel. Aww. Boom! Thank you. That was easy. That was all set up so smoothly. Uh, but I was waiting for an angel, and I had some accountability in my life. I was talking to one guy, and I was like, man, this is what I'm thinking. And he goes, Earl, you're an idiot, okay? She's amazing. She loves God. She's a woman of character. She has all these gifts and talents. She walks with humility. This, do not step out of this relationship because some angel hasn't showed up. You stay in it. I'm so glad he told me to. Again, that I had that months later, had another moment. I was just getting, I was just unsure. You know, I was just like, this is like for the rest of my life. I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to like do this over again. I don't want to make a mistake. Um, so I'm, that's why I wanted something so clear. And in the midst of it, God didn't send an angel. He sent a person. Yeah. He sent a person to speak words of life and wisdom to me mm -hmm. and to help keep me on the path. So this is why we say be planted in church. Yeah. This is why we say don't jump from church to church to church to church to church because no one knows you. No one has time to get in your world. Yeah. No one knows what your weaknesses are. No one gets to know your blind spots. Yeah. You're, you're so s slippery and so like in, in one week and yeah. out another week that no one has a chance to get to know the real you. So we don't know if you're making dumb decisions because you won't let anybody else in. Yeah. That's why you got to sit in a place long enough, even when it gets a little uncomfortable. I got offended, but I'm staying anyway because I've got healthy covering and accountability around me. Y'all with me on this? So good. And I would say, too, you want to date someone and be in a dating relationship with someone who is humble. And when you're humble, you stay teachable. Because when you get married, you're going to need help. You're, you don't want a spouse who doesn't ever want to ask advice from other people. Those are some of the most miserable marriages, marriages that are trying to figure it out by themselves. But it starts with a miserable dating couple who just believes the lie that we can't get help, we can't ask for help. Find you a man, find you a woman who is humble enough to ask advice, to have people that they respect and love that will speak truth and wisdom into their life. Because there's gonna come a time when you're gonna need to make a major decision. You're gonna hear from God, you're gonna hear from scripture, but you're gonna need confirmation. And so if you have a pattern of going to someone who's godly and wise, who's gone before you, it just leads you the right direction and you don't have to be struggle bus. So, There's so, so many good. couples yeah. where the spouse is like, oh, I don't want to go to marriage counseling. And the marriage is on fire and either the wife or the husband is not down for counseling. But if they would have started counseling and getting wisdom when they were dating, mm -hmm. then getting counseling You're once you get married would have yeah. felt very natural. Yeah, that is so, so good. So look for that in someone. That's so good. Okay, let's go to number five. Uh, be but I think that's new to people. Oh, but it's That's totally why it's new. so quiet right that's now. Right, that's right. This yeah, is good. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah good. but how many marriages last? Yeah, that's right. Not a lot. Mm -hmm. We're going to be, we're coming up on 26? Seven. 27 years. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. 27 years. You look 27 years old, which is crazy. Babe. It's Thank true. You. But 27 I'm not even years. Lying. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm trying to be sweet. I'm not even trying to be sweet. I look at it. Somebody said to me the other day, go get your, uh, go get your dad. They said that to Onika, uh, talking about me. And I'm like. I mean, I might look older, but I don't look like her dad, but that's how young you look, honey. But I say all that to say we've got to watch a lot. And see relationships that work, relationships that don't work, relationships that are someone who's newly dating, somebody who's newly divorced. We've gotten to see the whole thing because we've been around for a minute. But I'm just telling you these principles, they work. We've been on this for 27 years, yeah. and we have watched God do some beautiful things beautiful. in restoring lives, giving people just like their dignity, even when a relationship doesn't work, when you're surrounded by godly counsel and you're planted in church. This is so, so good. Okay, we got to run through these here. Okay, being equally yoked 
and both running towards Jesus is vital and non-negotiable. Hey, okay? Some of y'all are like, I ain't clapping for that. <laughs> what if they got a good heart, you know? <laughs> and, hey, good hearts are great. Yeah. Get them connected in church. Invite them. But you, if you're running hard after God, you want somebody else who's running hard after God. I'm just telling you, okay? Fine people get ugly. It happens all the time. You can be the most beautiful person on the outside, but if you are ratchet on the inside, it catches up and they can have the body, fellas, she can have the body like I was dreaming for, I was dreaming for this type of body. Ladies, you're like, he's got to look like this. But if he is a miserable, selfish, egotistical man, I don't care how many abs he has. You will not want to be with that individual. So you want to find someone that you are equally yoked with. That means you two are running together. That the two of you are headed the same direction. That you have visions that are in alignment with each other. That you're going after the same things. That you don't want to live a life of selfishness, but you want to live a life for the glory of God. You want somebody who wants to make a difference in the world. And if they don't want to make a difference in the world, and you don't want to make a difference in the world, and they don't want to make a difference, and I guess you are equally yoked too. At least you both love Jesus. So you got lazy and you love Jesus, or you got go-getter and you love Jesus. But make sure you got somebody that you are equally yoked with, because it gets too hard to drag somebody along. You don't have the energy. You have it when you're first, when you're lonely enough. But when you're with them for a minute, they get heavy. They get real heavy. Then you're like, well, you're married. And you know, okay, you don't have to listen to me. Do it. Okay? And we'll be here to help pick up the pieces. We will be here to help you love, love you back to health. I'm just letting you know you want to find someone yeah. that is running after God, moving the same direction you are. That does not mean they need to know as many Bible verses as you. It's like, okay, how long have you been in church? You only been in a year? I've been in seven years. Later, fool. No, Next. no, 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 no. Because you might have somebody that's been in church a long time, but they still don't look like Jesus because longevity is Say not it. the same as maturity. So Say you got to be, you can be in church less and be more mature than somebody else. So don't judge someone based on do they lift their hands or not. That's not the ultimate sign of or spiritual Bible maturity. Or Bible verses on their Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> no. That'll trick you. That'll trick you. Let's keep on going Can here. you say the thing that you said to one of our sons about a difference between a boy and a man? Ooh. Oh, boy. Okay, if I can remember this. If I can remember this. Grayson and I were talking. This is even last night. We were talking. Um, I, think I actually wrote this down because I sent it. We, we were a text thread. with. Our, okay, here it is. Boys do what they want to do because it feels good. Men do what they need to do because it's right. Say it again. Boys do what they want to do because it feels good. Men do what they need to do because it's right. See the difference? Dave, thanks That's for playing. Bold. Uh, but don't play any chords yet, man, because we're going to keep on going here for a minute. So, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. You single or what? No, you're dating somebody right now? Okay, all right. How's it going? Okay, Is good. She all here? Right. Do we know her? No. What? We don't know okay. Her. Oh, Back to number right. four accountability. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later. No, I'm kidding. Man. We love, I'm sure she's amazing. Uh, okay, let's go to number six. Understand yeah. that your identity is fully in yeah. Christ and not a relationship. Yep. This is it's a, that's hard to do. easy to say, hard to do. Yeah. When everybody else around you is dating, everybody else around you is getting married, everybody else around you is getting asked out, and you're not. Yeah. And you're like, well, I'm whole in Jesus. Well, I don't want to just be whole in Jesus. I want somebody to take me out. <laughs> so you can, I want you to feel that. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 
but there is a, still a truth that remains, and that truth is your identity is in Christ and not in that relationship, and you got to fight for it. You got to fight for it. You got to fight for it, because if you're 42 and you're still single and you're like, man, I, still, I actually I see myself being with someone, but I'm still whole. I'm still whole mm -hmm. because I'm whole in Christ. It's not the ring that makes me whole. Yeah. Matter of fact, if the ring is the thing that makes you whole, it'll be the, the ring will be the thing that can make you unwhole. Yeah. And you don't want to have your wholeness or your completeness. Yep. Sorry, Jerry Maguire. We don't want that found in another person. Right. We need that to be found in Christ. So like Onika said earlier, we're not putting excessive weight on yeah. a person to be our savior. Exactly. This is super nuanced. I'm running through things a lot faster. They're harder to live out. So I don't want to be flippant at all. Some of y'all are like, man, you, you don't know because you, you have, and I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not saying I do. I'm submitting these things to help us get the right recipe so at least we can have the type of relationships that we really want to have that will glorify God. And just real quick too, that applies for when you have a if you have children now or when you have children in the future, you don't want to find your identity in your child, in your career, because careers change. You go through different things as parents, and if you have your whole worth built on that relationship, that friendship, that job, that promotion, that car, you lose things in life. And so you're stuck with just you at the end of the day. So you have to be able to lean on Christ so that you don't fall when things don't go the way you want them to. That is so huge right there. So you see how the principle's transferable? For anything. So it's, it's not just dating. It's dating. It's work. It's friendships. It's kids. It's you fill in the blank. If our identity is in anything else, that thing ends up uh, increasing our worth or decreasing our worth depending on if it's in our life or not. Let's keep on going here. Okay. Be the type of person that you want to attract. Be the type of person that you want to attract. You're like, man, I want a woman of God, man. That's what I'm looking for a woman of God. Okay. How are we doing on being a man of God? <laughs> I want a man of God. That's what I want a man. I want a man who's hungry after God. That's what I, I want a man that loves Jesus so much. Okay, okay, friend. How we doing? How we doing with our own life and how we're carrying ourselves? Because you want to be the type of person you want to attract. Um, I want somebody who loves to work out. Work out. I want somebody who is planted in church. Be planted in church. I want somebody who loves to serve. Be serving. I want somebody who's generous. Be generous. I want somebody, fill in the blank, be the thing that you want to attract. I'm not saying this happens immediately because some of y'all, again, you're out there, you're like, I've been it for years and that ain't happened for me. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Again, we're going to lay things at the altar a little bit later tonight. But, but at least you're being the type of person that you know you want to be. And sometimes it's right to do that to attract somebody else, but it's even better to do it for the glory of God. Let me keep on going here, though. Verse number, this is number eight, not verse number eight. This is number eight. The same spiritual muscle that keeps you from having sex before marriage keeps you staying faithful when you're married. Well, the strength you need as a dating partner to be the best husband, wife, or mom and dad. So boundaries are healthy. Purity isn't a punishment. Purity, thank you. Purity isn't a punishment. Stand up if you feel purity is a punishment. No, just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different ways we can go here. Do we have, we're supposed to do Q&A, aren't we? Are we supposed to do Q&A tonight too? Oh, boy. Okay. okay we'll fly through. So we're, we're going to fly through some of this stuff. Me... Self-control. Let me just say this as you get where you're going. I'm going to read this the... scripture too, honey. Go. Gonna... Yeah. You read the scripture first. You it's sure? More okay. More then, important. Then drop some knowledge. Okay. Put this on the screen for me real quick. First Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse number, I think we're starting in 16. Do you not know that he who, you, who, who, he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one flesh. 
But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I think I have this in the message version too. Can you put that on the screen for me? Do we have the message version? Yes? No? The message was just up there? I'm going to wait. Help me. Is it coming? All right. Okay, here it is. Uh, since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids, watch this, that avoids commitment and intimacy, leaving us more lonely than ever. The kind of sex that can, that can never become one. There is a sense in... which sexual sins are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own bodies. These bodies that were made for God-given and God-modeled love for becoming one with another. Or didn't you realize that your body... is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a, I think it's high, we'll see, we'll wait. High price for. The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through so your body. Powerful verses right there. Honey? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, tagging off of that, that self-control can, you know, funnel over into other areas of your life. So if you have no self-control, it impacts your spending. If you no, have no self-control, it impacts your physical health. If you have no self-control, it can cause heartbreak in your marriage. So self-control, learning it while dating, will just bless you in a bunch of other areas in your life. So you can't compartmentalize. And so when you practice something like that, it impacts your future richly and beautifully. So why not learn it now? That is so, so good. So when we're talking about this, yeah. um, I know, again, this is not the pattern of the world. The pattern of the world is, hey, I like you. You like me. We've been together for a while. For some of us, it's a shorter period of time. For yeah. some others of us, it's a long period of time. Uh, we're like, okay, it's been six months. Now it's good. Yeah. And it's like, I'm saying it's not six months. It's not three months. Yeah. It's ring. It's marriage. Yeah. And this is the, the confines that God set up, not because he's trying to punish us. It's because he loves us. Yeah. And I know someone's like, no, I don't feel loved right now. I feel tortured. And that's a real feeling. Uh, let me just tell you this. There, there could be a time when you are married and let's say your spouse is gone on a business trip for a while. When on that business trip, you don't want to have to wonder, do they have self-control? When, if your wife one day uh, has to go through bed rest. So, because she, you know, she's pregnant and she has to have bed rest, so you can't have sex for six weeks. This happens. Can your wife trust you? Can she trust that you're going to continue to honor God and honor her when you, you can't have sex for those six weeks because it's not healthy for her or for the baby? This is where real life lives. And we just think, oh, I'm just, I just got to get my needs met. But it's not, our, our bodies don't just belong to us. They belong to God. What if you had a neighbor that came up, 
took your car keys, took your car, drove your car, hit, banged your car up against a bunch of other cars, then brought your car back, tossed you the keys, and they never asked you if they could do that with your car. This text is telling us your body belongs to God. That's his car. And here we are taking the keys, just banging it against a whole bunch of things. Bad analogy. That ain't bad. That's real. Banging, 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 banging. <laughs> I got some more. Guys, I, I'm... I'm not, I'm, I'm going to stop though. I'm going to stop. It's God's car. Yeah. This just doesn't just pertain to sex. It pertains to other, other areas of our life too. Our, our hearts. Our hearts. Yeah. It's God's. The young lady that you're dating, the young man that you're dating, yeah. that heart, their life, it belongs to God. How would I treat that person yeah. if I don't think of them as someone who's, who's there to meet my needs? But I think of them as someone who belongs to God. Yeah. How would I treat them? Beautiful. Number nine, number ten, we're going to get all done here. Comparison is a thief of joy. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus no matter what season you're in. You will never yeah. win a comparison game. So good. This is a big one for us. But let me go to verse number, number ten. Not verse. <laughs> I keep saying verse. Uh, ask someone out. Why, listen, this is 10 rules for dating here at Shoreline City. Ask someone out or say yes to the date. A coffee is not that serious and could be the start of something special. Yeah, you can clap for that. You can clap for that. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> or hearing way too many times, I can't do it. I can't take this step. I don't want to do it. Is she my wife? Lord, tell me if she's my wife before I... No, you don't know. You haven't even gone to coffee. You don't know her last name. Yeah. Uh, don't walk up to somebody. The Lord told me you're my spouse. No, he didn't. That's the devil. You better get out of here, okay? I'm not listening to you. Those are the 10 rules. Um, do we got time for Q&A? Let's do a couple. I'll say this while we, we figure did. out how okay. that's going to go down. I'll say this. If you date and you break up, don't stop coming to church. We talk to so many couples who they're like, I can't come to Charlotte City anymore because we're no longer together and it's just too awkward seeing each other. Just go to a different service. <laughs> For real. Don't decide before you start dating someone or if you're currently dating that if we break up, Nothing's keeping me out of God's house, not even you. Yes. Write that down, get a tattoo of it, but don't get taken out of God's house and don't have to go church hopping because the relationship didn't work out. Decide now, this is my house, I'm staying home no matter what. That's so good. Yeah. Uh, how do we do these questions? Did we already, like, do we, oh, just Oh, so we're doing a free-flowing question. Oh, okay, wow. let's see what happens. I know, that's interesting. Oh, shoot. There's some crazy people in this church. You okay, uh, <laughs> who feels like they have a question that they want to ask that'll be a little bit inappropriate? Just kidding, okay? Just kidding, not, not a little inappropriate, but just some questions. Oh, no. Who's got the mics? Oh, you got one right here? Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Hello, everyone. I do have a question. Um, I'm a parent. Okay. So I want to know, when is an appropriate time to introduce your children to the person you're dating? That's a great question. That's great, a great question. question. Uh, this is um, a, maybe a new day, or maybe not for some of us, it's just the day in which we live that um, we have had over the course of the church, I'm trying to think the what, 12 years we've been here, uh, without a doubt, there are way more relationships where people that are in their 20s that have like been married before and even find themselves, you know, single again. And we do not want any shame or shade or guilt to be on uh, any such person. Um, I know that may have been a problem for churches years ago. We don't ever want that to be a problem here. Everybody's welcome. But then if you got a beautiful little, you know, gift that God has given you, 
uh, in this relationship, uh, the age of the child really matters. My mom was a single mom, right? When she started dating uh, my old stepfather, I was already, you know, 16, 17 years old. Uh, so bringing him into the relationship was a little bit different uh, as compared to if you have a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a five-year-old that's looking for a father or a mother. So you have to be really, really wise in this. Uh, and this is where I think the accountability uh, with somebody who is healthy, somebody who really knows you, knows your child, and would know the relationship that you're in that could give you that counsel. I would be foolish to say, oh, it's at two months. Oh, it's at three months. Oh, it's at a year. I think uh, every situation is so, is so nuanced. Uh, but what I do know is there will be a right time. And it is important to make sure your child has a healthy relationship with that individual. Because if not, all the contention and the strife that can fill the house, I don't think that's God's design either. So I believe if there is going to be another man or another woman that's going to come into your life, that, that God knows that that man or woman will be equipped to be a father or a mother to the child. I'll also say this. Uh, I want to encourage a lot of us who maybe have never been married to realize that you very well may, you might be the right new mom or new dad for a kid that is already here. Yeah. And maybe you've taken that off the board because you're like, I need my own kids. And I'm just telling you, we have seen God work beautiful miracles in adoption in families when a man or a woman understood that the call they had stepping into uh, a situation where there was already a child in place. Just open up your heart a little bit more and, I, and allow God to speak to you. Now, don't marry somebody because you love their kid. That's unhealthy. That's not the reason you get in the relationship. I, I can't leave this because I just love the kid. No, no, you don't marry the kid. Yeah. You marry the mom. You marry the dad. Yeah. So let's make sure we keep that in perspective. But some of y'all might need to open our hearts up a little bit more. So, so great question. Hopefully that gave some uh, context. We got, another, we got another question. Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Help me out, somebody. Come on. Give, give me, give me some running this? Oh, balcony. balcony. I don't even know if we have a microphone up there in the balcony. What, right here? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Hello. Hi. We need to talk about this equally yoked okay. thing because yep. I get advice from fellow Christian um, people who are dating or they're engaged or even my friends who are married and they say, well, I was further along than he was when yep. we first started yep. and now you should see him. Yep. You know, he can grow. Yep. But my question is like, how, what does that look like to wait for them to grow? grow. Yeah, like, that's a great question. You know question. what I mean? Like, how do you even bring that up to someone who maybe didn't grow up in church like I did? Yeah. You know, like, I want you to be equally yoked. I want you to run with me, but like, yep. I got to wait till you're ready. Like, I don't, yeah, you know what I'm a, saying? I feel like I'm that's probably a great not the question. only one. I think that's, that's a great, great question. question. Thank you. Yeah, I would say um, start with character and integrity. So if they don't know the, a Bible a ton, but they have great character, great integrity, they're honest, they have great friendships that are healthy. They're, they have a um, decent relationship with family or a family member. I think there's other things that will give you a discernment on if they have the heart that can turn towards being madly in love with Jesus. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because if they're dishonest, they have a terrible track record, they have no friendships, they trust no one, and they're not in church, I think that's a harder turn than someone who has a generous heart, who has great friendships in their life. Does that make you catch what I'm saying? Yeah, so I would say look for that, and that will help you on the road. Yeah, that's really, yeah. really good. But it good. doesn't have to be, I know this many verses, they know this many verses. No. I was raised in church, they were raised in church. But I think good friendships with men that you would want your future kids to be like says a lot. Yes, that's really, really good. That's really good. Great wisdom. Okay, let's go one, one, one or two more. I, I don't even know where the microphone, okay. Here we go. Yep. Hey, Earl and Nika, great job tonight. Really appreciate it. You're kind. Right? <laughs> you know, I'll definitely, uh, you know, it, it, I feel called not just to pose a question to you guys, but even a question to the audience. Is there anyone in here that's, you know, athletic, 
loves Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. So, okay. So anyways, so um, there's, there's the note of that sometimes you're, the relationship, maybe you already know them. You've already built somewhat of a friendship. Can you talk about converting that to more of like a seriousness? Like you mentioned, you know, ask them out, right? Ask for a coffee. It's not that serious. To, from a more casual sense to more intentional and, and seeing if it is a You're saying you're already friends, but now we're interested. In, I'm interested in trying to take it to another to level. next level, indeed. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, again, I don't make the... I try... I want to encourage everyone not to make everything so intense. I feel like there's so much stress right now. Am I just seeing that, or am I, is that accurate? This seems like there's a lot of stress around like, can I ask him out? Can I not ask him out? What should I do? What should I not do? And it's like so stressful. So I just want to, we want to kill that as much as we possibly can and go, just breathe, okay? You're a man. She's a woman. You're a woman. He's a man. It's coffee. We've done this a lot of times. You've been to Starbucks a bunch in your life. So let's just go ahead and go and not try to make it something that it's not. I know that is uh, hard to do at times, but I, I'm trying to normalize it a little bit more in this Shoreline City environment uh, so that we do not create so much tension and fear. Now, one of the things I would say, if it is somebody that you're interested in, you're friends with, I do think it's wise to ask someone else in your friend's circle that you are in, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, because she may be talking to somebody else that she's interested in that group. And now you go, oh, thank you. I will hold that. That cup. happens a lot where mm. someone will um, go hang out with someone that they like, but then someone in that friend group also likes that person, and then it gets really awkward. So I think having those conversations ahead of time. I think it really, really helps, uh, just can kind of help make things a little bit smoother there, but don't be afraid. I just, as much as we possibly can say it, don't be afraid. You're probably still going to be, but just push past that fear, and let's go ahead. Tonight, tonight we're going to go out on seven coffees. That's what we're saying. Tonight, we're getting seven coffee dates. And I'll say this, too. This is just free for whenever it applies, but focus on an amazing friendship because I feel like our marriage has stayed healthy for so long yeah. is because we're best friends. Like, yeah. Earl is my best friend, my favorite person, my ride or die. He's my one. But our relationship started off as a friendship. Yeah. And so here we are all these years later and we're still best friends. I think sometimes when we get in a relationship, we focus on all of the like physical stuff, the romantic, the chemistry, and all of that is wonderful and amazing. But if you don't have a good friendship, the <laughs> chemistry really just fades anyways because then you get not attracted to the person. Yeah. So focus on a friendship because at the end of the day, you, you end up with a best friend for almost 30 years. Yes, when you're dating someone, a lot of times, the things that you really value yeah. don't end up being the things you value as much when you're in the marriage. Eric was talking about this earlier. He was like, man, I always wanted somebody who was a go-getter, who would touch the world, and that's what I'm looking for. And man, I'm not concerned if they want to be a mom or something. Who cares about that? I want them to touch the world. And now that he has kids, he's like, I'm so glad my wife loves my kids. But he didn't value that. When he, was, when he was dating, he was valuing this other thing. And I know we want to value abs and glutes and shoulders and bank accounts. He has all of that. You do. I, get out of here, honey. <laughs> get out of here. It's true. Get out of here. Oh, that made me feel good. Uh, <laughs> You value like all this stuff, yeah. but man, life just hits, yeah. and it can hit hard, yeah. and jobs and economy yeah. and a lot of things can come at you. Yeah. Do you have? Are you trustworthy? Yeah. Are you honest? Those two things. I mean, just learn to be honest and trustworthy, and it will help you in your relationship. Are, are, are you teachable? Can, can you apologize? That. Write those things down. Do you, do you, have, do you have the ability... To say sorry. To say sorry, I was wrong. Can, can you do something you don't want to do when you don't want to do it? 
just because it's the right thing to do? Do you have that ability? Because that's the stuff that actually builds strong, lasting relationships. It's not abs. It's not, y'all. And I, I pray you have great ones, okay? As a matter of fact, we all do, even if they're hidden. <laughs> I pray you have all of that. Do it. Go ahead. But at the end of the day, you're, you need, if you're sick, you need somebody who can pray for you. If you're sad, you need somebody that's going to be there and be willing to cry with you and not just say, get over it. Are they empathetic? Do they have any compassion? Can they be moved towards you? That's the stuff that you want out of a, a husband or a wife. That's, the, that's what you want out of a relationship. That's the stuff that'll make a difference. We'll do balcony and then we'll shut it down. Oh, wow. All right. So, um, I love your long flowing hair as well, my friend. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like the chosen. <laughs> so my circumstance is uh, Uh-oh. pretty awkward. I was happily married for 15 years, and then my wife was received into heaven <sighs> three, three years ago. You know, I'm a single dad, and I got it. It's hard. I keep running into women that they, they're not ready, you know, to take on my little girl. And I feel like sometimes they get jealous, and it's like I got to break away from these toxic relationships, but it's like, Sometimes I feel like I have unrealistic expectations. Even having a new wife, I didn't think I would be married twice. I wasn't that type of man. I was devoted 100% to my wife. And sometimes I'm like, am I living with unrealistic expectations, thinking that there's someone else? And maybe should I just focus on the little girl that she needs me more than anyone else? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. But at some times I feel... Not whole. I mean, even though I'm whole in Christ, sometimes yeah, I, I, I want to talk to someone. Be like, "Hey, Millie's going through this." Yeah. And I'm going through this, and it's it's just complicated because I don't. I, I. It's not like it. People could just read off my face and say, "Oh, he's really gone through something." Yeah. Yeah. And. I, I don't know, Pastor. I just. No, that's that's a great question, and you're definitely gonna have seven coffees by the time this night is over. I can tell you right now, you got that hair, you got a little girl, and you cried. Okay, so, brother, you're good. Um, but in all honesty, that is, uh, I appreciate your transparency, appreciate your openness, I appreciate your vulnerability, and uh, sorry for all you've had to navigate. Uh, I pray that we can always be a church that is able to, you know, handle well, carry well, where people really are, not just where we want people to be. Uh, so where you are right now, uh, I appreciate that's real because sometimes you just want somebody to talk to that you can just go home and share your life with. You don't feel like you're performing anymore. Like I'm out of this game of singleness and I just get to be me, and I get to be honest, and I get to be real, and my breath can stink, and they don't care. Um, so I, I, I really, really appreciate that. Are your expectations too unrealistic? I would have to talk to you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one to know if they are. I do know sometimes that is an issue with some of us in our singleness, that we are expecting someone to have the muscles, the spiritual, emotional, relational muscles of someone who's been married 25 years and the person's only 25 years old. And you're looking at your dad and like, mom, my dad's like this. And it's like, well, your dad didn't start off like that. Your dad was raggedy and your mom helped your dad become who he is today. So you got to give the man some space to grow, to become who God has called him to be. You got to give this woman some, well, you're not like Onika. I see when Onika prays at the end of church and your prayers are just, Lord bless me. I'm like, that, that ain't enough for me. Don't do that, okay? She has been through the fire. She has a lot of life that she has lived, and there's a depth and a maturity that she has, and it's wonder to aspire to, but for you to expect somebody who's just 
got, got out of college or has just got out of a relationship to have that same depth. It's not okay to have those unrealistic expectations. You are setting yourself up for failure for a really, really long time. So I do say have a list of some essentials. I actually am fine with that, but I don't think essentials are things that we sometimes make essentials. Six, four. You're telling me if that man loves Jesus, he's, he's got great credit, this man is willing to serve and care for you deeply, and he's 5'9". Talk about it. I know. If, you are, if you're 6'4 and a guy or a girl in this room, stand up right now. 6'4 or taller, stand up. 6'4 or taller, 6'4 or taller. Come on, Let's stand up. Let's clap Guys and girls. Guys and girls. Got any girls? 6'4 or taller? Okay, okay. Wow. We don't have any girls. Oh, I didn't see any girls. Okay, okay. No one to any hoopers. All right, so thank you so much. You're welcome, by the way, fellas. Uh, I don't know all those guys. I know a few of them. Just because they have the height physically does not mean they have the height spiritually. I want them to have the height spiritually. That's why we have our Thursday morning, 7 a.m. lineman Bible study that I want to encourage you to come to here at Shoreline City. But just Thursday, 7 a.m., Earl's praying with the guys. It's really powerful. 7 a.m., yeah. We're, we're going to grow. We're going to mature. We're going to develop. We're going to do all that stuff. But I pray for all our 6'4 brothers and above that your spiritual life, your character matches your height. Matter of fact, I pray it exceeds it. But do not be surprised if you got a 5'9 man that is full of faith and strength and wisdom. Shoot, 5'9, maybe 250 too. Might not be all that he wants to be around here, but in here, man, he's got it. I'm just telling you, we have some things that we've made essentials that aren't necessarily essentials right off the bat. I don't know your whole list, sir. I don't know everybody's list, Frisco online, I don't know your whole list. But what I do know is that if you have the desire in your heart to be married and to have a significant other, I don't believe that desire comes from the devil. Yeah. I, think, I think God put that in you. Yeah. And I think it's okay to ask God to bless you with that beautiful person and to begin to pray for them before you ever even meet them. And pray that if you get in a relationship with someone, treat them maybe like they are somebody else's spouse. And how would you want somebody who may be dating your spouse right now to treat that person? And if we can all treat each other that way, I think God could do something special and magical, dare I say, in all of it. Okay. Hit it, Day. Um... I want to do, we're going we're gonna to dance and stuff tonight. We're going to do some stuff. We, we can be all done with all this stuff here too, team. Thank you. We're going to dance. Um, what's that little card? Ashley, do me a favor. Pass that card out real quick. Yeah, pass that card out. Online, I'm not sure how you're going to get this card, but I want you to get it. Can somebody hand me that? Maybe do I have it up here? I might not have it. Okay. Taylor, do me a favor. Hook me up with one of those cards, please, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're going to pass these out. Frisco, I believe you have these as well. Um, put that Habakkuk verse on the screen for me, if you would not mind. Habakkuk chapter 2. Uh, it says, write the vision down. Make it plain so that the herald can run with it. Write the vision down. Make it plain. Put it on tablets so it can run with it. Have here... Five things I want to be known for while being single. I want you to write that down. You're going to get to keep this one. You're going to get to keep this one. It's part of your vision. What do you want to be known for? If I were to ask the people that you used to date what you are like, would it show up on this list? What do you want to be known for? On the bottom here, Five things I want to lay down during this season. Now, some of you are like, I got 15. <laughs> you can fill out 15 if you want to. But maybe you do have five. Maybe right now, anxiety is a thing that is just stressing you out deeply. 
Write it down. Maybe right now you have not, maybe, can I, can I go here just for a second too? Maybe masturbation is so much a part of your life that you feel like it's impeding your walk with God and your connection with other people. So you think, man, I, I, I got so much lust going through my brain. I, I, I just want to write that down. I just want to write that down. I don't know what the thing, it might, it might have something to do sexual, it might have something to do emotional, it might have something to do physical, I don't know what it is, but I know for men and women, all of us online in the room, Frisco, we all have something that we, we probably want to lay down. We're not asking you to put your name on this, so you get to be as honest as you want to. And we're just going to, we're going to write those down. We're going to sing a couple songs here and just worship. But I did not want this night, we did not want this night to pass without us having maybe a clearer vision of how we want to move forward in our singleness and some things that God might be calling us to lay down so we can live lives for his glory. I'm going to invite the team uh, out here. That's why I'm pray, pray for us. These, uh, these cards have a little preparation. So maybe um, you might want to after you're done writing, take your five things that you want to lay down. You want to bring them up here? Put them at the altar in the balcony. I think we have some buckets up there. You've got some buckets up there. You want to take it, drop it in that bucket. You totally can. It just kind of sometimes can help to, to write it down, then to move and to place it someplace. This kind of can create a moment where you can remember that you took a step. So, Father, over every man and woman under the sound of my voice, Right now, I just ask in Jesus' name that you would move by your spirit. That you would complete the good work that you started in every single one of us. I pray that as we even talk tonight and you just may be breaking up some of the, the soil of our heart, that you would pull out the things that are weeds, that your word of truth and life would plant deep on the inside of us. I'm asking that tonight would be a night of transformation and change. I'm asking that tonight would be a night of healing. I'm asking that tonight would be a night of breakthrough. I'm asking that none of us would stay the same. Would you give us a picture of what you want us to be known for in our singleness? And then would you reveal to us the things that you want us to lay down? We want to do it all for your glory. So Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, speak. Holy Spirit, change us. Holy Spirit, open our eyes.